Hello everyone, let's continue with Stockfish's opening repertoire. We're having a look at d4, knight f6, c4, and then g6, mainly. And uh, we've got to do it before my computer melts from the heat. So, after g6, what does uh, Stockfish want to do? Well, the amazing thing is that for uh, um, about uh, 150 thousand million nodes um stockfish wants to play h4 i was really thinking wow you know wouldn't this be amazing if this was its main line not quite uh, in the end but um for much of it and uh, its main line goes like this i mean the whole idea is that uh, essentially the engines fear uh, the grunfeld and uh, they want to do anything to avoid it and playing the move h4 that uh, well dissuades black from moving this knight over to d5 because you just play h4 h5 so this was the line that um, uh, that Stockfish was looking at, and now um, this is actually a game uh, Mag Sudlu against uh, Abdus Satorov uh, in 2022. And here White went Bishop f4 and Queen d2, and here uh, Stockfish wants to play King f1. And after h5, then uh, g3 castles Knight h3, and you're just trying to play this sort of uh, Benoni structure with uh, you know pawns uh, d5, c4 against d6, c5, which engines tend to think are a little bit better. I mean, White's played a little bit funny, so Black's got a little bit more time. But um, Stockfish, you know, Gate was giving it a 0.50 uh, evaluation, you know. So um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I wonder. I'm not exactly sure why it, uh, why Stockfish didn't want to play this in the end, but um, definitely uh, really interesting to see a move like h4, you know, being the top move, Stockfish's top move for uh, for so long. The other interesting thing actually was uh, that a little bit later, just briefly, at 270,000 million nodes, then uh, Stockfish wanted to play the G3 system. Um, and I, I saw this with Coivisto as well, that Coivisto suddenly uh, switched to the G3 system and then uh, got less keen on it. And uh, just playing this move with, uh, with B3 and then uh, Quite this sharp line with uh, B, D takes C4, B takes C4. I think A5 in this position has also been quite a good move for uh, for Black. But uh, D takes C4, C5 takes takes Queen B6, Queen C1, Rook D8, and um, yeah, I mean this is uh, um, a game um, following a game Korobov against Vasilagrav, Chartres 2022. Uh, Vasilagrav played uh, Bishop D7 in this position. Rook D8 is uh, Stockfish's line, and um, yeah, knight b3 is uh, a Stockfish's novelty over a, um, a correspondence game. Um, how is that looking? Well, it ends up as a 0 0.35 advantage for um, for uh, for white. It looks like a, a little bit better, but uh, you know, obviously not um, not winning in any way. But uh, kind of a position you could play with as white. So again, not 100% sure why uh, Stockfish got less keen on uh, on g3. But in the end, it went to knight c3 and. Uh, it just took on the Grunfeld. And um, yeah, I mean, the system of the Grunfeld that it wanted, well, quite interesting. We'll go for the one that it went for eventually. And this was uh, just the old Bishop E3 system, also a favorite of uh, Alpha Zero. It won some gorgeous games uh, against uh, Stockfish 8. Um, and um, well, we actually follow um, a game Carlson Ding 2020. So uh, this line here, the Queens come off, Knight F3 and then Bishop G4. Bishop e3, and now rook d8. Um, knight c6 was uh, uh, Carlson Ding, and uh, Magnus uh, drew that one. Uh, d5 takes takes, knight d4, bishop h3, f5, and uh, uh, that ended up a, a draw. Um, rook d8, well, Stockfish gives itself an advantage at the end, but to be perfectly honest, I don't really see it at all. Bishop b2, knight a6 is the idea. Takes takes, knight e5, takes takes. And now rook c8 and uh well 0 0.30 advantage but i mean all i'm seeing is a draw here really so um this does not look um too convincing for um uh for uh, for uh, uh for white here really um but the bishop e3 line was what um stockfish wanted um on the way there um stockfish actually got um uh, quite keen on um uh, a few other lines so for example at uh, 170,000 uh, million nodes, um, Queen B3 popped up. Um, so D takes C4, E4, A6, and these lines are quite well known as well. Um, Bishop B6, Queen C2, they've been analysed a lot, of course, by uh, white players desperate to find something against the um, uh, 
the uh, the Grunfeld. Uh, Queen A5 has been played here. The Stockfish's favourite move was takes takes knight c5. Castles knight c4. And uh, well, there's a recent game Esipenko against uh, Navarra, where White played uh, Queen b3 and Esipenko uh, won against Navarra. Queen d3 is um, Stockfish's move. Queen d6, g3, and we're following amazingly enough Giri Grischuk Sid Tbilisi. 2015 or oh, I didn't pronounce that well did I and uh, we follow it for quite a few more moves so this is all best play according to uh, Stockfish still following this game lots of little tactics there and we end up in a an opposite colored bishop uh, ending here and here uh, Anish Giri played king g2 um, Stockfish says king f1 but uh, well it's all a draw uh, in the end 0 0.34 maybe there's some chances of uh, getting over to the b4 pawn for white but uh, against good play it shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be anything of course so this was another line that uh, stockfish was considering um, then it also moved on um, after that to c takes d5 and the good old rugby one system uh, we've already seen that um, in, in the choices of uh, of other engines already and um uh yeah i mean this line again very very sharp i mean the whole time uh, white looked at playing bishop g5 first and then bishop e3 nowadays bishop e3 straight away seems to be the move uh takes rook b7 a5 and it's just uh i've spent quite a lot of time analyzing these in my time and uh yeah <laughs> certainly in the pre-computer age it was a nightmare just those <laughs> that a pawn coming down and you're never really sure what's happening um with an engine it's uh, a lot easier um you can just follow what uh, what it says and um yeah d takes c8 is possible queen d5 is uh, stockfish's move takes bishop d7 a1 queen bishop check bishop c8 queen a6 and we get this um well rather tenuous rook uh, bishop and two pawns against queen position um, where you know um, unless you've got the engine you're not 100 percent sure that uh, everything's hanging together but it's a 0 0.28 advantage for uh, for white but basically you know um this is uh, ending up as a, a pawn up for white uh, but with all everything on the same side and just a dead draw here so uh, again this is a line that uh, stockfish ends up uh, rejecting and goes for uh, you know this ending in the uh, bishop e3 line that i've shown you but uh, i mean it's pretty clear that uh, you know engines are struggling to find anything against the uh, uh, the grunfeld which is why you know uh, stock uh, komodo dragons uh, approach of playing uh, knight f3 bishop g7 and e3 was pretty sensible really you know delaying this this uh, explosion um, of uh, of the pieces, you know, until uh, a later moment, that actually looked quite um, quite promising. But uh, well, anyway, it makes me feel better that uh, you know even Stockfish against the Grunfeld is uh, struggling to find anything good. Obviously, as soon as you give uh, Stockfish the um, uh, the King's Indian, then it's uh, much much happier. So bishop g7 and here actually uh, stockfish um wants to play not just the classical like koi vista wanted to but likes to play this uh, mcoganov system and uh, certainly without the knight on f3 it's a very popular idea here and uh, um, this is the main line that's uh, that's played queen a5 bishop d3 knight c6 and we get into some sort of um Maroxy bind uh, position here where um well white will be a little bit better but um black's not doing too badly at all bishop b2 is a is a novelty this was uh, uh, up to here is a game uh, andrekin against uh, sadwani where um black played uh, knight takes d4 takes and bishop d7 which is uh, another typical thing bishop b6 uh, played in a game stood against uh, david anton 2020 and uh, bishop b2 is a novelty takes takes rook c8 b3 yeah what can you say it's a um uh, a pretty standard um uh Maroxy bind where uh, white's a little bit better, but black's not doing too badly either. Um, that is uh, Stockfish's main line, but interesting to see this McCoganoff system with bishop e3 that uh, Richard Palliser, who's uh, um, done a lot of work with Gawain Jones as well, he told me once that this was a, a pretty dangerous system. And uh, well, the engines certainly seem to think so as well. Interesting thing, you know, if um, white goes uh, knight f3 first of all, bishop g7, and then knight c3, and you don't allow Stockfish to play d5 but force castles, then um, no Mokoganov system with h3, just um, the classical. But here it goes really bizarre because uh, I let um, uh, Stockfish analyze for years, it felt like, 
um, in this position. Um, and um, I mean, you know, there's many moves in this position. There's uh, knight a6 that I always played. Uh, there's knight c6, knight d7, even e takes d4 has been popular at some stage. But I have never, ever seen this move, h6, as any sort of serious move. And, um, well, I mean, there's been a recent game by uh, Fabiano Caruana, so it's clear that people are looking at what Stockfish likes and uh, looking at it, but it's really quite amazing. Um, and what's particularly amazing about this, I mean, um, this move h6, what's the point? It stops bishop e3, standard development, really. So you're going to play knight g4. The bishop can't go back to d2 because uh, um, d4 is hanging. So the bishop will have to go back to c1 and you could just repeat moves if you wanted. So, I mean, that's the basic idea of it. And uh, the idea then is that, you know, what you're hoping is that white's going to play d5. And then rather than spend time having a knight chased around c6 to e7, like in the Mardel Plata, you can just put, play a5 and put your knight onto a6 straight away and then go for the king's side attack. Um, but the really amazing thing is after rook e1, um, and I can tell you I wouldn't have guessed this, it's not what uh, Fabiano did, actually. In the game, Fabiano played knight d7, which... Seems a bit odd, but uh, Stockfish played the move a5. a5, could you believe it? I mean, what Stockfish is waiting for again is uh, it's saying, you know, play d5, go on, play d5, and then I'll play my knight round to a6. You know, that's what I want. But the key thing is, you know, isn't it now time for White just to grab this pawn on e5? And, um, well, the tactics are simply um, amazing. I mean, I was kind of expecting that Black was just going to play a move like knight a6, leave the pawn like that, and then just claim compensation. But actually, what Stockfish wants, it just wants to play this. And uh, uh, now there's a couple of ideas. I mean, knight takes f7 really does win a pawn for, uh, um, for white. Um, because after I go bishop c3, um, white's got the move knight h6, king g7, and then b takes c3. And, uh, well, you can't trap this knight. I'm just going to go f3 and knight g4 or whatever. Um, so that's fine. But after knight f7, Stockfish just want to take, take, and, believe it or not, play a4. And, yeah, the, somehow this position is fitting together. No development, but, um, uh, yeah, quick development. And knight c6. And, uh, well, basically for the pawn, you know, black's got plenty enough compensation. And uh, the line goes on, but it ends as 0.08 for, uh, for white. So no advantage whatsoever. Amazing idea. And um, I mean, the other line, you know, when I was analysing this just for myself without an engine, you know, I sort of said, well, I can take on f7 and I can also just uh, take on e4 even because, uh, you know, here I can go bishop h6, bishop b2, rook b1, and I'm going to go bishop g5. I'm going to go knight f6. I've got pressure. I mean, how can this be OK for black? Well, you know, Stockfish thinks 0 0.65, but that's not a big advantage. And, um, you know, the nice thing about it is that here, bishop g5, rook e8, takes, takes. And, I mean, there's two possibilities. I mean, uh, Stockfish has uh, knight d7 as one uh, idea, uh, but it also has the very nice rook a6. Again, this point of a5. And we're just going to neutralize the e-file with rook e6 and then just develop. And, you know, there as well, black isn't doing too badly either. So... I mean, that's simply amazing. I mean, I would not believe it, you know, that this would work. And, uh, well, it makes sense when you see after a3, you know, um, there is a previous game where black played knight c6 in this position, um, lower rated game. Um, but actually here, Stockfish just wants to carry on with a4. So, uh, again, you know, saying d takes c5 doesn't matter. This pressure on the queen side is great. And um, uh, if ever you go um, uh, d5, well, probably I'm, I'll, I'll get, go bishop d7, I guess. And then, you know, afterwards play a knight to c5. So bishop f1 is Stockfish's main analysis, which really makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, I, I think, you know, what Stockfish is doing here is uh, it's amazing opening concepts. If I found this, I would have been so proud. But um, um, simply trying to keep the tension in the centre and stop black from getting any sort of advantage from um, delaying the development of the knight on b8. But now... Now Stockfish goes for it and uh, knight c6 and the basis of this is just a pawn sacrifice. So we're just giving away this pawn on a4 and we talk so often about the neural nets that they understand that this pawn you can lose it and it doesn't affect anything immediately right. It just you know it's not killing your position. I mean still you know black's got this lovely compact clump of pawns in the center and this pawn well it'll be a danger later but not for now. And now having sacrificed diverted white's forces on this side Black starts hitting on the king's side. And, uh, I mean, it's just Benko-style counterplay. You know, bishop on uh, g7, 
Um, we're going to get in uh, bishop e6 then. And uh, so, you know, white needs all sorts of odd moves to uh, to keep the position together. And somehow, um, you know, Stockfish just uh, considers that, you know, this is sufficient compensation for black. Um, again, you know, um, yeah, uh, this pawn on b3, pawn on a3, they're all weak. And um, and Stockfish thinks that this is uh, holdable. Um, I mean, there's you know many more variations, but you know this concept of going uh, uh, just going h6, you know, move on the king side, and then um, uh, afterwards following up with uh, a5 to a4, and then a pawn sacrifice to activate on the king side. I mean, it's unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's just totally new. I've never seen anything like this. I've looked at these lines a lot with white. And I've never, ever had that idea coming up in my head. So quite incredible, you know, really, uh, really quite amazing. Now, just to round off a few more things that are a bit G6-ish, even if they aren't quite. Um, C5, D5 and B5, the Benko. Well, I mean, actually, um, we saw this already uh, in the modern Benoni. It's pretty similar. Uh, this is Stockfish's main line, E6 and then uh, E3 and then E6. And again, just play for a Blumenfeld. And uh, a lot of lines were transposing into the ones I showed you uh, earlier. So that's quite amazing. Um, the other interesting thing here is uh, E5, which is the Budapest. And um, um, what uh, um, uh, Stockfish wants here, well, it's something that actually I first saw in um, uh, the TCEC. But there was also a book by, um, oh my goodness, Killer Gambits, and I can't remember the author's name. Was it Salgado Lopez? I think it was, uh, where he recommended something very similar. And uh, it was E3, Knight E5, and F4. And what's really nice about this is that, um, uh, you know, often this knight on G4, um, it's, you know, just staying on there and causing white problems. He just chase it away, take away the central squares, put up a bit of a dark squared blockade, and um, knight e6, and now, well, you can do all sorts of things. In the PGN, I've shown um, uh, some, yeah, some great games. I mean, there was a game by Leela where it played knight e2, which was really fantastic. And Stockfish wants uh, knight c3, d6, and then b3. Um, and um, uh, g6, bishop b2, um, just neutralizing this bishop on g7. Um, queen d2, castles, bishop e2. Bishop F3 and Knight E2 and uh, you just look at the white pieces here and they're just so beautifully logical you know just um, these lovely Knight on C C3 Pawn on C4 Bishop on F3 clamping down on D5 Pawn Z3 F4 stopping Black's pieces from using D4 and you know your next move is going to be something like Knight D5 and uh, not Bishop takes C3 come on you're going to play Knight D5 and swap off Bishops and just have plenty of central control it's such an easy way to play against the Budapest and so powerful um and yeah i mean this has really come out of uh of uh, of engines uh and uh, an engine solution to the problem so you know really really nice so definitely ha look at that one because uh you know there's lots and lots of theory on the um on the uh, on the budapest and this is just a really simple way to play so there we are that was uh g6 uh, knight f6 g6 in the next video maybe one maybe two i'm not quite sure yet we're going to have a look at the rest of the stuff and that's uh, some um just some other stuff that hasn't really fitted into here and there's also some very unusual crazy stuff as well so uh well see you at the next one